application of science and technology for disaster management and mitigation that topic we will first see and into the science and technology use of gis remote sensing gps we will see in the next presentation okay so now what contents we will go through is geoinformatics in disaster management what do you mean by geoinformatics the information that is gathered using the science and technology how you can use it for application in knowing the geographical conditions in knowing the geographical situations of any area that is geoinformatics in disaster management then disaster communication system land use planning and development regulations disaster safe designs and constructions structural and non structural mitigation of disaster science and technology institutions for disaster management in india so, so this contents we will go through in this particular topic so geoinformatics in disaster management like i told you geoinformatics in the sense the use of science and technology for knowing the ge geographical phenomenon of any particular area so the uh, science and technology in the sense uh, the remote sensing uh, geographical information system that is gis global positioning system that is gps so these are the uh, geoinformatics i mean the technologies that are used for disaster management then what is remote sensing you have heard this word many times you might knowing about remote sensing as well the meaning of the word remote sensing that is sensing something from a remote area from a distant area that is called remote sensing correct so remote sensing is an investigative technique that uses a recording instrument or device to measure or acquire information on a distant object or phenomena with which it is not in physical contact okay so that is remote sensing without being in physical contact how you can sense the information sense the data record the information record the data from a distant location from a remote location that is called remote sensing right so the technique is used for accumulating important information of the environment remote sensing can collect data much faster than ground based observation covering a large spatial area at one time to give a comprehensive view correct for example if you want to have a geographical view a geographical data of any particular area rather than visiting that area and getting the data by physically being there you can collect the data of that area over a long distance okay through a remote area okay with an easy way that is remote sensing okay without being physically present or actually collecting the data from on site okay so it has lot of advantages because you don't have to go physically to collect the data and plus it covers a larger area large amount of data over large space could be could be collected it has the capability of capturing images of distant targets in all weather conditions it has the capability of capturing the images of distant targets in all weather conditions so which are the techniques used in remote sensing like uh, what helps in doing this remote sensing so you know satellites correct so so satellites help in collecting the information of distant area over a large spread of area correct similarly you can have aerial photography aerial view of any particular area you get it right so that is aerial photography okay so th those are also techniques of remote sensing so as you can see here the satellite the aerial photography okay so everything is shown here then then radars you have okay that help in collecting the information of a area from a distant place so using remote sensing data such as satellite imagery imageries and aerial photos to map the variation in terrain properties such as vegetation water geology both in space and time okay both changes with the time and changes with the coordinates of that uh, i mean positions okay so changes with respect to space and time everything could be collected with the help of remote sensing 
helping to locate the area of a natural disaster and monitor its growing proportions, providing information on the disaster rapidly and reliably, and thereby ensuring that extent of damage is evaluated precisely. Right? It helps in locating the exact position of the natural disaster happening in a particular area and how is the proportion in which it is spreading. For example, when Nisarg cyclone was about to uh, enter Mumbai, you remember? So we were seeing those map and we were looking at how this approach of this uh, the cyclone is, how it is moving from one place to another and how did we come to know that it did not touch Mumbai? Of course, from the news we came to know, but even from those uh, live maps that we were getting and how the movement of the cyclone is and how with proportion it is increasing. So how did you get that map? So how did we get that exact information of exact areas and exact uh, location of that disaster? So we got it from remote sensing. So that's what it said tell you, helping to locate the area of a natural disaster and monitor its growing proportion providing information on the disaster rapidly and reliably because it gives you the exact space, I mean exact location and exact time data and thereby ensuring that extent of damage is evaluated precisely. Monitoring the disaster event which provides in turn a quantitative base for relief operation. So if you know with what proportion it is growing and where it is moving or where it is located a particular disaster, it helps in relief operation, providing the relief operation as early as possible at exact locations. Then GIS, which is a part of this geoinformatic, correct? So remote sensing, GIS, GPS, we just saw. So, Geographic Information System, GIS, can be defined as a system of hardware and software for measuring, storing, retrieving, mapping, monitoring, modeling, and analyzing a variety of data types related to geographical and natural phenomena. Now, when you know that remote sensing will help in collecting the data, but what after collection? After collection of data, how to present it on a map? how to provide you know the exact uh, information on the map okay like we have seen uh, for every disaster we had seen the prone areas like for drought we had seen the drought prone areas over the map for flood we had seen the flood prone areas highly uh, you know highly affected less affected all those maps we see right so how are, how are those maps prepared of course, the data GIS helps in collecting the data, but analyzing that data, mapping that data, you know, so that is done with the help of GIS software, where you are supposed to have the software also and hardware also. Of course, you need the GIS software and of course, you need the hardware, that is the computers and the um, you, uh, satellites and all to collect the data. So it is a combination of hardware and software and hardware will help in collecting the data and software will help in analyzing and mapping the data. Okay, you can see here GIS data layers. Okay, many different types of data can be integrated into a GIS and represented as a map layer. Many different data. You know drought prone areas. Okay, so you have the data of uh, which areas are more uh, prone to drought and which are less prone. That range you have uh, for every place. You have another data which says population in those areas. Okay. Then you have another data which says economic conditions in those areas. If you map those data one above the other, what you will get? Then how the drought is going to affect the community in that particular area, correct? If the population is high and if it comes under a drought prone area and if it comes under the economical backward condition area, of course, that area will be highly affected with the drought. So what we did, we combined the various data together to form a common conclusion. So this way, the GIS helps in mapping the data one above the other and make some conclusion in that particular area okay 
so many different types of data can be integrated into a gis and represented as a map layer examples can include streets parcels zoning flood zones client location competition shopping center office park demographics demographic in the sense the population spread throughout the uh, area when these layers are drawn on the top of one another undetected spatial trends and relationships often emerge so when you want to get the relationship between different data okay so mapping of those data is done in gis this allows to gain insight about relevant characteristic of location okay then application of remote sensing and gis in various disaster situations like drought earthquake floods landslides all those natural disasters where the application and remote of remote sensing and gis it has high scope then you know remote sensing you know gis now gps global positioning system you also know what is gps you have been using it from on your phone as well so global positioning system a critical component of any successful rescue operation is time correct rescue operation when will you say that the rescue operation was successful or is supposed to be successful when it reaches that help reaches the position exact position on time okay prior knowledge of the precise location of landmark streets buildings emergency service resources and disaster relief site saves time and lives now you use gps going to any place you use the gps that is present in your phone which gives you exact location so it becomes easy to locate any location it, it becomes easy to re to reach any location if you want to know the nearby hospitals you can easily make out from gps if you want to know the nearby emergency services for example fire services okay fire extinguishers say so it is easy to locate that okay so similarly it happens that when a disaster occurs using the gps it is very easy to locate the Uh, exact location and what are the services that are there uh, nearby to it so it helps in saving the time and the lives global positioning system serves as a facilitating technology in addressing these needs by helping the users at any point on or near the earth surface to obtain instantaneous three dimensional coordinates correct it helps in obtaining the three dimensional coordinate if you go through the google maps also through your uh, whatever you use your phone or any other um, device you can get the three dimensional coordinate that is the exact three dimensional coordinate of that particular area so that is because of gps global positioning system correct then application of gps pinpointing the location of damage sites and flood plains pinpointing the exact location of damage sites and flood plains right playing a significant role in helping the scientists to predict the earthquake in earthquake prone areas okay using the precise position information provided by gps scientists can study how pressure slowly builds up over time in an attempt to characterize and in the future perhaps predict earthquakes how with the location to location the uh, the earthquake is spreading or which is which particular area is more vulnerable to earthquake all those could be easily located using gps then meteorologists responsible for storm tracking and flood prediction also rely on gps gps can give quick information in the efficient operation of their emergency response team correct so that is the use of gps for exactly exactly locating the particular uh, area then disaster communication system early warning is the provision of timely and effective information through identified institutions that allows individuals exposed to hazard to take action to avoid or reduce their risk and prepare for effective response 
Disaster communication system. Very important part is communication. If early warning communication is done with the people which are going to be affected or a part of that disaster, there is timely and effective information to be provided. Okay, helps people in taking some action before the disaster happening in that particular place. Right. So early warning information suggests the people to take action when disasters close to happening. So early warning is the integration of four elements. Okay, when you talk about communication, the first thing is the early warning communication before the disaster is about to occur in that particular area. So it is the integration of four elements that is risk knowledge, monitoring and predicting, dissemination of the information and response. Okay, so it is the integration, the combination of these four elements that is knowledge of that particular risk or disaster monitoring and predicting okay dissemination spreading of that information and response that is required in that particular area okay then land use planning okay like we have seen science and technology use of science and technology we have seen the early warning communication importance then how important is land use planning Land use planning is described as a process undertaken by public authorities to identify, evaluate and describe the different options for the use of land including consideration of long term economic and environment objectives. Okay, Land use planning that is process undertaken by the public authorities to identify. Okay, identify evaluate and describe the different options for the use of land including considerations from for long term economic and environmental objectives using of the land proportionately in a way that would increase the economic benefit the social benefit and also achieve the environmental objective that is called land use planning correct so purpose of the land use planning, why it is so important? Selecting the safe site for building structures. In this land use planning, it is very important for you to get the knowledge that which particular site will be safe for building the structures. If I know that one particular land is much vulnerable to flood, of course that site is not safe for building structures, right? So that way you can do the land use planning selecting the safe site for building structure, relocating a community outside the hazardous and disaster prone areas, formulation of land use policies for long term sustainable development, appropriate land use in the disaster prone areas by adjusting the land stability with agriculture development strategies, Long term land use planning by incorporating all the geological related data available and identifying for allocation of hazard free areas for industrial and urban development. Correct. Then high investment industries and other important structures should not be located in the area that are susceptible to damages. So basically, with the help of the, the science and technology, which we, where we get to know the exact locations of the prone areas, this will also help us in doing the land use planning, where this structure is safe for construction, okay, where the agriculture areas could be constructed, okay, how the people could be relocated to the hazard free areas how the important infrastructure should not be located in the disaster prone areas all this helps with the i mean could be done with the help of land use planning then development regulation adoption of the culture of safety in construction to follow bylaws and codes and usage of good quality material this development regulation also helps in avoiding many disasters right if you are using exact you know following the proper bylaws using good quality of material for construction which comes under development regulation also helps in reducing the impact of any disaster 
the government shall support these initiatives by providing technical guidance to rebuild the homes that can sustain against shaking of earthquake when you talk about building construction correct so one disaster which comes into your mind is earthquake if you build your building properly with good quality material with proper designing with proper bylaws and codes of course we are less prone or we could say the uh, impact of that earthquake disaster would be less on those particular buildings manuals need to be developed outlining methodologies for new construction identification of the vulnerable buildings in the state building structures on the firmer ground or stiff soil because stiff soil lo lost their strength with lose their strength i mean with strong vibrations priority of buildings according to their importance okay so that comes under development regulations and disaster safe design and construction like buildings should have a simple rectangular plan long walls should be supported by reinforced concrete columns door and window openings in wall shall preferably small and more centrally located location of the openings should not be too close to the edge of the wall so these are simple design considerations when you are building uh, i mean constructing a building okay which will help in reducing the impact of the disaster landslide safe design and construction it's not just earthquake it's flood landslide cyclones you know other disaster also uh, which the knowledge of which has to be taken into account while designing a particular building constructing a particular building so landslide safe design and construction the potential for the landslide and development erosion can be greatly reduced or prevented with proper development proper construction techniques and regular maintenance of drainage facilities keep the surface drainage water away from the vulnerable areas such as steep slopes loose soils and non vegetated surfaces improve the soil's ability to resist the erosion by stabilizing the slopes by increasing the vegetation and trees when you have more number of trees and vegetation of course the stability is increased of the slopes then flood safe design and construction avoid residing on river banks and slopes on river sides build at least 250 meters away from the sea coast or the river banks build proper drainage system in all the flood prone areas so that the water can be drained off quickly to prevent accumulation construct the building with a plinth level over which the construction is done correct with a plinth level higher than the known high flood level construct the whole village or settlement on a raised platform higher than the high flood level structural and non structural mitigation of disaster so you know structural mitigation is defined as a risk reduction effort performed through construction or altering the physical environment through application of engineered solution that is making some some structure that you build in a way that will help in reducing the impact of disaster okay some physical structure so that is called the structural mitigation like building codes using the building codes for building construction relocation structural modification then earthquake flood cyclone resistant buildings like just we had seen construction of community shelters construction of barriers and retention systems all this comes under the structural mitigation methods correct and when you talk about non structural mitigation it is defined as a measure that reduces the risk through modification in human behavior or natural process without requiring the use of engineered structures so in non structural mitigation you don't have to construct anything you don't have to make any structure it is through changes in the human behavior it is through changes in the natural process okay for example legal framework land use planning okay so these are all non structural measures incentives and financial framework training and education if you have got training education of course it is change in the human behavior not constructing anything right if you have the legal rules legal actions to be taken 
if there is any wrong thing that is going to be performed that comes under non structural method public awareness knowledge transfer right all this comes under non structural method then science and technology institutions for disaster management in india these institutions help in using this remote sensing gps gis for disaster management so which are those institutions indian meteorological department imd central water commission cwc indian national center for oceanic information system okay incois geological survey of india gsi defense research and development organization drdo indian space research organization isro and department of atomic energy dae so these are the institutions right which help in collecting retrieving storing mapping zoning all analyzing that data everything that we were talking about gps gis um remote sensing all this is done or performed by these institutions okay so in this particular presentation we had seen the basic uses of science and technology basically the geoinformatics that is gis remote sensing and gps similarly we have seen how important is land use planning how important is the development regulations in terms of various disasters the the natural disasters and also we had seen what do you mean by the structural measures i mean structural mitigation measures and non structural mitigations uh, measures and we have seen the institutions which where this application of science and technology is done for disaster management and mitigation okay in one next slide we will be seeing about the various example how successful the use of remote sensing gis and gps was during various disasters so application of remote sensing in disaster management so what topics we will see here introduction disaster management cycle remote sensing and gis role of remote sensing in cyclones earthquake flood and other disasters remote sensing global issue and conclusion so introduction disaster now you have seen this definition many times that it is a natural or man made which is called or technological hazard resulting in an event of substantial extent causing significant physical damage or destruction loss of life or drastic change to the environment that is called the disaster correct so it is a phenomena that can cause damage to life and property and destroy the economic social and cultural life of people correct so we we know that it is classified into natural and man made disasters where cyclone volcanoes floods and earthquakes are few examples of natural disasters terrorism war are few example of the man made disasters then now disaster management natural events can't be prevented right they are inevitable but potential disasters can be managed to minimize the loss of life through a four part cycle of mitigation preparedness response and recovery which is called the disaster management cycle right we have seen this in the previous lectures also so disaster management cycle which consists of mitigation preparedness response and recovery so if you see in this particular cycle see here start so prevention and mitigation which is done before the disaster occurs so what all things are covered in this particular phase establish objectives risk assessment risk prevention and mitigation then preparedness is a part of that disaster management cycle which is also done before the occurrence of any disaster what things are covered into it emergency access and evacuation routes emergency team and drills emergency response equipment okay that is also preparedness before any disaster occurs then response when the disaster occurs that is during so what are the things that are covered under response phase immediate protection of damage heritage immediate damage assessment rescue and relief and salvage okay so that is done in the 
uh, response phase. It's like this, like rescue, relief and salvage, immediate damage assessment and immediate protection of damage heritage. Follow this arrow. Okay. And then comes the recovery phase, which is done after the disaster has occurred. So that is detailed damage assessment, treatments, that is restoration, retrofitting, repair, recovery and rehabilitation. Okay, so this is your disaster management cycle. Different phases and what are the different stages in that? Okay, then remote sensing and GIS. So remote sensing, as you know now, that is it is the science of acquiring the information about the earth using remote instruments, using instruments that are located very far distance from that particular area, such as satellite. And it is inherently useful for disaster management. Satellites offer accurate, frequent and almost instantaneous, spontaneous data over large areas anywhere in the world. When a disaster strikes, remote sensing is often the only way to view what is happening on the ground. Correct? So that is how useful it is. Okay? So for example, how that remote sensing works, it is given by a very simple line diagram that is See, energy source or illumination, that is A point, radiation and the atmosphere, that is the B, interaction with the target, with the target on the ground, okay, recording of the energy by the sensor, okay, C, D, recording of the energy that is reflected from that point by the sensor, Trans, uh, transmission, reception and processing is done of that data. Interpretation and analysis. Okay. Interpretation and analysis. And application. That is how see here. You could see the layer of the maps and then a final conclusion map is prepared at this particular point. Okay. Then. Geographic information system is a computer-based application of technology involving the spatial and the attribute information to act as a decision support tool. It keeps information in different layers and generates various combinations pertaining to the requirement of the decision making. It's not just, GIS is not just collecting the information and collecting a single characteristic of information. It's not just like that. It's not just it will help in population. It's not just it will help in land use. Say. It is combination of the information which will help in giving you a conclusion or making, uh, you know, making a result of that area. The data required for disaster management is coming from different scientific disciplines and should be integrated. Data integration is one of the strongest point of GIS. So that is the major benefit of GI is that it helps in combining, integrating the various data together. In general, the following types of data are required. For example, if you want to make a map using GIS, these are the following type of data that are required. Data on disastrous phenomena, landslide, flood, earthquake, their location, their frequency, their magnitude, then data on the environment in which disastrous event might take place. Topography, geology, geomorphology, soil, hydrology, land use, vegetation, etc. Data on the elements that might be destroyed if the event takes place. Infrastructure, settlement, population, socio-economic data, etc. Data on the emergency relief resources such as hospitals, fire brigades, police stations, warehouses, etc. So all this data when combined together, it helps in preparing a GIS map which helps in concluding, uh, giving a concluding remark. For example, if you have a data, I'll give you a simple example that when you're talking about say landslide, okay. Because here one example is given of landslide. So if you have the data of slope of different areas, okay. So we know where the slope is more, the, that particular area will be a landslide prone area. Now you have slope, 
data you have land use data for example in that land use you will be given where you have the population located that is residential areas where there are commercial areas where there are rivers where there are other you know things present on ground okay you have slope map you have land use map now you know that when where there are where there is slope more that area is prone to landslide plus you have a data where in that particular high sloping area a lot of residential areas are located so now you know when you combine this two data that is land use and slope so you know that a area which will be more prone to landslide will be affecting the population more because i have the data of more number of residents living in that particular area so this way you combine two datas together to form one conclusion similarly if you have another data say drainage okay if you have drainage data so if you combine again this drainage data with the land use data and the slope data so you can immediately tell ki if particular area is more prone to landslide how it is going to affect more that drainage area the drainage area of which particular area will be getting damaged if landslide occurs in that particular area right similarly if you have road map okay now again i am combining the fourth data that is road map so if you have a transportation say road map okay and you know when you combine this slope road population and uh, drainage together now so that i will get a conclusion from that that which particular area is more prone to landslide which is going to get um, you know and where there are more suppose there are more road networks present in that particular landslide prone area so of course if the landslide occurs in that particular area the road or the transport system will be completely stopped or will be completely you know damaged or affected so this is how you can make conclusions when you combine different data that is integrating the different data together so that is done with the help of gis then you can see here role of remote sensing in cyclone okay so when cyclone occurs for example they have given an example of a cyclone that how it looks when you make when you use uh, see it through remote sensing so how remote sensing will help in different phases of disaster management for example mitigation you know now this other phase mitigation preparedness rescue recovery so remote sensing will help in risk modeling vulnerability analysis whatever data it is collected is use of using remote sensing and the whatever data integrated to make a conclusion that is with the help of gis right so in mitigation phase it will help in risk modeling vulnerability analysis in preparedness phase the remote sensing data will help in early warning long range range climate modeling in rescue data i mean rescue phase it will help in identifying escape routes crisis mapping impact assessment cyclone monitoring storm surge predictions right when when there is cyclone cyclone which happens it also leads to increase in the sea level as well right in recovery phase it will help in damage assessment spatial planning okay now which are the satellites which help in collecting the data during the cyclone the names are given see kalpana 1 insat 3a quick sat uh, radar meteosat so these are the satellites which are used then in earthquake how this remote sensing data helps during the earthquake see how the map or the image look with the help of remote sensing okay so in mitigation phase the remote sensing data helps in building stock assessment hazard mapping in preparedness phase is help it helps in measuring the strain accumulation okay how accumulation of the strain is happening due to that earthquake in that particular area in rescue operation the remote sensing data helps in planning the route for search and rescue damage assessment evacuation planning deformation mapping in recovery phase this remote sensing data during the earthquake helps in damage assessment identifying sites for rehabilitation 
and satellites which are used during the earthquake to collect the data are given the names of the satellite okay so the world agency of planetary monitoring and earth risk reduction uses the remote sensing to improve the knowledge of the building stocks for example the number and height of the buildings high resolution imagery imagery can help hazard mapping to guide the building course and disaster preparedness strategies then now during flood we have seen now cyclone and earthquake now during the flood how this remote sensing data will be helpful okay so during the mitigation uh, mitigation phase of flood disaster remote sensing data helps in mapping the flood prone areas delineating the flood plains okay land use mapping then in preparedness phase is helps in flood detection early warning rainfall mapping in rescue phase the remote sensing data helps in flood mapping evacuation planning damage assessment in recovery phase it helps in damage assessment spatial planning and satellites which are helpful okay during collection of the data for flood okay so these are given now sentinel asia that is the asia and pacific regions which have come together for disaster management a team of 51 organizations from 18 countries delivers remote sensing data via the internet as easy to interpret information for both early warning and flood damage assessment across asia it uses the dartmouth flood observatories dfo's river watch flood detection and measurement system so that is also one system helps in collecting the data based on amsr e data to map the flood hazards and warn the disaster managers and residents in flood prone areas when rivers are likely to burst their banks okay so the same thing what we have seen for cyclone earthquake flood so in various other disaster how this remote sensing is helpful for example drought so in mitigation the remote sensing data is helpful in risk modeling vulnerability analysis land and water management planning in preparedness phase it is helpful in weather forecasting vegetation monitoring crop water requirement mapping early warning so in the recovery phase of drought remote, remote sensing data helps in monitoring vegetation damage assessment in the rescue phase of drought it helps in information drought mitigation and these are the satellites which are helpful to collect the data similarly when there is a volcano okay so this remote sensing data helps in the mitigation phase in risk modeling hazard mapping digital elevation models in preparedness phase it helps in emission monitoring thermal alerts in recovery phase it helps in mapping the lava flow evacuation planning in rescue phase it helps in damage assessment spatial planning and these are the satellites used when the volcano occurs to collect the data when fire occurs in a particular area fire hazard fire disaster so remote sensing data will help in the mitigation phase in mapping the fire prone areas monitoring the fuel load risk modeling in preparedness phase it will be helpful in fire detection predicting spread and direction of the fire early warning in recovery phase the data will be helpful in coordinating the fire fighting efforts in rescue phase it will be helpful in damage assessment and these are the satellites which are used for data collection when fire disaster occurs in landslides the in the mitigation phase the remote sensing data will help in risk modeling hazard mapping digital elevation models in preparedness phase it will help in monitoring the rainfall and slope stability in recovery phase it will help in mapping the affected areas in rescue phase it will help in damage assessment spatial planning suggesting management practices and these are the satellites used for collecting the remote sensing data during the landslide so one case study is given that how it was so helpful so case study of use of remote sensing in gis in felin cyclone okay so you can see the imagery 
the satellite imagery 8th october 10th october how with the time 11th october and 12th october images so on 7th october indian meteorological department received the information from the satellites that is kalpana 1 ocean sat insat 3a doppler radars deployed at vulnerable places with overlap sensors in the sea and through the ships about a cyclone forming in the gulf between andaman nicobar and thailand named felin on 8th october 2013 IMD confirmed the cyclone formation and predicted it as severe cyclone and its effects will be felt from Kalingapatnam in Andhra Pradesh to Pradeep in Odisha and that it would probably the first strike the port of Gopalpur in Ganjam district at about 5 pm on 12th October the wind speed could touch around 200 km per hour so you see how much with the help of remote sensing how much accurate the time the place the date the um, characteristic that is the wind speed all could be collected then on 10th october 2013 imd prediction of a severe cyclone was converted to a very severe cyclonic storm with wind speed of around 220 km per hour the us navy's joint typhoon warning center predicted it would have wind speed to around 315 km per hour on 12th october the very severe cyclonic storm had its landfall had its landfall in the sense it arrived on the land at gopalpur port at about just a second at about 9 pm with a speed of 200 km per hour then how this remote sensing was helpful during this felin cyclone so during the mitigation phase it helped in risk modeling vulnerability analysis strengthening the economical weaker sections disaster response infrastructures and disaster performing the disaster drills in preparedness phase the gis the remote sensing helped in early warning system constant updates from isro imd and usngt wwc etc distribution of the satellite phones vhf and other things okay mass evacuation on the basis of cyclones path over the state in the response phase the google crisis map was prepared was with the help of remote sensing and gis the google crisis map the google people finder odrf that is odisha response action force and ndrf deployment in the recovery phase the remote sensing and gis helped in relief operation coordinated by navy and air force it helped in disaster management it helped in logistic coordinated by centrally operate, operated units and spatial planning so this is how one of the case study that how during the felin cyclone the remote sensing and gis data helped in exact time and location and day wise even the characteristic of the cyclone was recorded and how it was helpful in different phases of that disaster so basically the conclusion is that hazards especially the natural hazards are inevitable we know they are bound to occur which was never and will never be in control of human humans can only try their best to prevent it from becoming a disaster Remote sensing and GIS can play a very important role in this endeavor and hence preventing the loss of millions of innocent lives and billions of dollars of properties. It's highly prerogative that we must focus remote sensing methods more on mitigation and preparedness rather than rescue. Right? We because it is rightly said that prevention is better than cure. After effect before that we should Uh, reduce the impact that is before disaster phases are now important okay so we will stop our lecture here